Uh, thank you, Ravi. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. As uh, Ravi said that this is the uh, session post lunch, so we have a big responsibility to make sure that all of you are uh, engaged with this session. Uh, you know, when we talk about edtech and academia, uh, it's very clear that they have a role to play with each other and they really are not competitors. And this is something that a lot of my academic friends talk about, that will someday uh, edtech companies start doing or take away the role of a teacher altogether. Honestly, when we think of online education, I'm sure all of us know or all of us are aware that uh, in order to build scale for having the kind of GER that we are talking about in India, uh, online is the way to go ahead. But I'm not going to talk so much about the scale or online. I'm really going to speak a little more about uh, what can technology do, what can edtech do to support or to supplement, complement what teachers can do. So the, the partnership between academia and industry, to my mind, uh, really focus should focus on trying to do what a teacher cannot do. Let me give you an example. Way back in 1953, a Harvard psychologist uh, named Skinner went to his daughter's mathematics class. And when he went there, he found that, as is common, I'm sure all of us would have seen a class like this, that the class was, the teacher went and showed the students how to solve problems, a particular type of problems. After teaching them that, she sent out a set of sheet worksheets and the students started was asked to solve those problems. Some students started doing it with great joy and alacrity. Uh, many of the others were fidgeting, looking around, didn't know what to do. Some looked confused, some looked bored, some raised their hand for help. And what he realized is that the teaching was being done at a very standardized level and they were set, they were given a set of questions which were very, very standard. And the level at which each student was, was not being taken into account. So this standardized teaching set him thinking and he decided to create a teaching machine way back, I'm talking about 1953. Even before that in 1928, another scientist had actually prepared what was like a teaching machine where there were multiple choice questions which came out of a paper drum as the children rolled it. And that was really something that they were trying to make sure that it was getting more personalized. So the first point I'm making is that when it comes to teaching, maybe when you're talking about teaching, uh, personalized adaptive learning is what technology can focus on. And today we are way ahead from 1953 to now. Uh, technology has given us the edge to be able to look at personalized education and that is really what I think is a great edge that we can leverage with technology. The second part is the learning part. Individuals learn differently. The science of education tells us that there are people who learn uh, visually, people who learn kinesthetically, auditory, all kinds of learning styles are there. The science of education is something that teaches us that each one of us uh, is not is not similar in the way we understand concepts. Again, leveraging learning styles. Some startups are already doing this, edtech startups are already doing this. They give students a small test, check what really uh, is the best way forward for this child, and then go ahead. This is more common in K-12 education, not so much in higher education. But I think understanding learning styles, and I think it's so much easier with technology to be able to do this to be able to cater to individual learning styles. I'm sure that if I'm teaching a topic in economics, I could teach it with graphs, I could teach it with data, I could teach it with so many other things. Or I could teach it through using a movie. So this is what technology may, uh, may enable. And I think that's one way of uh, making sure that online and academia try to collaborate with each other to understand the science of education, incorporating the science of education. I'm not sure that EdTech today is actually doing all of this. Sometimes I feel that if you just look at some of the courses that are available, it's a professor who's talking and following that lecture, especially in the MOOCs, you have lectures being given. And at the end of the lecture, there is a multiple choice questions being given. Again, a standardized tool for evaluation. So that brings me to my last point of evaluation. 
Coming to evaluation, once again, technology can play a great role in identifying competencies and testing for those competencies. In fact, I came across something very interesting. Some research showed, showed that young children who were learning math were actually uh, asked a question or multiple times that they solved questions, it was observed that they felt that 3.27 is larger than 3.5 or 4.56 is larger than 4.9. So when this pattern emerged, people started wondering why is this happening? They seemed to think 0 0.27, 27 is greater than 6 or 49 is greater than 8. So the, it's, it's called whole number thinking, I'm told. So this kind of thing, pattern of errors that a student can make if technology can track it. It's well nigh impossible for a teacher to do this. But I'm sure technology can actually track errors of this kind and give remedial coaching, especially to young learners. So the, the importance of making sure that whether it's teaching, whether it's learning, or whether it is the evaluation part of it, technology can play a very, very supportive and complementary role when it comes to supporting academia. So I'll stop over here and I'm sure we can go ahead later on. Thank you.